Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am very pleased with our results, both in the last cycle as well as so far this year. And I am proud to serve as the National Finance Chair to work alongside guys like Andy Tobias and to represent an exceptional finance staff. Our case is a compelling one for investment. And it won't surprise you, I'm sure, that with a party as active as we have ever been nationally in every, every corner of this country, politically, we are also as active as we've ever been raising money in every corner from this country. And that is very gratifying for those of us who do that for a living. When we succeed, it is typically as a result of a number of factors. Number one, evidence of the 50-state partnership strategy as evidenced by last November's election at all levels of the ballot. It is often because of our compelling and, and central mission-critical role in the election of a Democrat President of the United States, regardless of who that person is. We certainly, in that regard, benefit from our exceptional field of candidates running for President. And we benefit, importantly, from the quality of our governance, whether it be in Congress or in state houses across the country. All of this adds up to lead to fundraising momentum, which we have. And it shows, once again, how inextricably connected politics, organizing, governing, and fundraising are. If we succeed in all of those four categories, we will not be denied. Lastly, and as importantly, or arguably most importantly, our fundraising base has never been broader. So as, as proud as we are, as proud as we are of the amount of money we're raising, we are just as proud, if not prouder, of the fact that it is coming from more people than ever before at all levels of contribution. And with that formula, we will succeed. We have a long way to go in raising the monies we're going to need to raise over the next couple of years. But we're off to an exceptional start. And for all of that, I thank you. With that, I have the honor to introduce our next speaker. This introduction for New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson was written by was, was written by Linda Lynch, the wife of journalist and New Mexico resident Paul Salopek. Last fall, Governor Richardson traveled to Sudan to rescue Paul and two colleagues from a Sudanese jail. Quote, I first spoke to Governor Bill Richardson on the 22nd day of my husband's imprisonment in Sudan. Paul would be held for 34 days in the vast and hollow plains of Darfur. Thousands of miles away at our desert home in New Mexico, this was a chaotic time of vivid fear. When Gover Governor Richardson learned of our situation, I met a composed and wise human being who extended a remarkable knowing empathy. He seized immediately what the complex circumstances demanded and I watched as he swiftly opened a dialogue that held my husband's life in the balance. It was not long before I witnessed the governor's unrivaled ability to wrest a moment of reason from a government that otherwise shatters lives. He brought Paul home. My husband is a gifted storyteller. He tells the stories of people whose lives have been shattered. I am blessed to know their stories as I am blessed to know Governor Bill Richardson, who himself has the gift for guiding hardened leaders toward their own humanity, if only for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Bill Richardson.